I'm from Shanghai, a metropolis where 24 million people live and work. Each of them had a different impression of Shanghai. From central uh, business district, full of skyscrapers, to the historical temple area, which is packed with delicious local food and tourists from all around the world. This is what Shanghai is to me, where my childhood is, where I played on the streets, where I also I chilled with my family in summer nights. But these are all disappearing, not only in Shanghai, but also in many cities in developing countries. These are four photos taken from four different cities in China and they look exactly identical. So we are developing too fast without critical thinking, without meeting the demand of the people living inside. How about in the Western countries? Yes, public engagement policy is much more mature. People are engaged, but normally in a very binary way. So this is what happens in the public engagement process. Only people who disagree shows up. In the United States alone, there's a six-year delay on average in starting the construction of the urban projects, which cost the nation $3.2 trillion in these years. Another example from the recent news, despite the disagreement and the protests among citizens, Governor Baker still signed a bill to approve an almost 800 feet tower to cast a shadow in the Boston Common. But wait, this isn't just a conversation about the, bus, uh, about the shadows. It's also about urban density. We all know that the suburban sprawl is a problem because it creates traffic and it creates um, pollution. One of the solutions is to increase the urban density, but that will bring us to the trade-off like this like shadows in public spaces. So urban decision making is all about communicating these trade-offs. How can we include everyone, including the citizens, the designers, the politicians, all into the, all into the same conversation? One of the difficulty about this issue is uh, we are lacking of the tool, a common ground, so that uh, experts and non-experts can both work on. For example, designing with uh, um, sketching on the master plan or use the 3D software requires years of trainings. It's impossible for the public to use them. So without a common ground, the, the communication is just uh, inefficient uninformed and normally happens in very late stage. Here in MIT Media Lab, we are finding and we finally find this perfect solution. A perfect te technology will bring us together, which is the Lego brick. <laughs> so why Lego bricks? I, we think a Lego brick is a perfect media to bring people together first, and also it can democratize the urban decision-making process. First, anyone, even kids, knows how to use it. It gave us a chance to move, to touch, and to change the design of the city very intuitively. Second, it can carry information about the trade-offs I just mentioned. I will show you what I mean by that. So we built a, a city scope, which is an urban decision support platform. Uh, it's a city model built out of Lego, and there's uh, layers of information projected on it. So user can add or move different Lego piece, represent different um, building uh, building uh, represent different building types, and also the user can change the height of this building. So when they do this, 
The impact of this change will then be analysis and uh, represented on the table, including the traffic, the sunlight, and uh, also how the city will look like. So this information will be represented in a way that is as intuitive as possible, like the heat maps in which green means good, red means bad. And al also, we have the radar chart with the scores for different aspects of the city's performance. These feedbacks are very important because it will inform the embedded trade-off in the city. For example, when you increase the urban density by adding more, um, by adding more floors on the building, the energy efficiency will increase. The city therefore become more sustainable, but the downside will be the traffic might get more congested, and also the, you might have less sunlight in the courtyard. So with CityScope, we think we, have, we can have a more accessible tool for everyone to join in the conversation very intuitively and collaboratively. So let's take a look at what's behind the scene. So this is a Lego piece without any electronics inside, but the magic part is this color tag just uh, in, um, uh, at the bottom of each of them. And this color code will be read by the camera and then be decoded as an ID. So when you put this Lego piece on, you are actually putting on a piece of information this information will tell the system what type and what kind of people uh, were living inside. And this information will then be calculated um, for the performance of the city. Not only uh, this information will be calculated uh, in real time, but also we can have the system help us to give us suggestions, like uh, in this sense, people or the system will tell us what and where the best location to put what kind of building and how high it should be to best balance the trade-offs. So e each move we have, the system actually calculates a lot of possible moves and give us the best solution, which is the one with the highest score. So AI here just uh, tell us, uh, oh, lastly, I should tell you that you can accept or ignore my suggestion. That's a very interesting question. Should we really trust it, or should we really make them to make decision for us? To answer this, I think uh, this is a good story to tell about the human and the machine's relationship. In 1997, uh, in 1997, uh, Gary Kasparov was defeated by the supercomputer Deep Blue. People thought that would be the end of the chess game, but it wasn't true. Instead, people reinvented it. So a new freeform kind of chess game allows any combination between human and machine. Surprisingly, in the end, all the winning teams are the human plus machine. They call them centaurs. So this tells, actually, human plus machine are more strong than human or machine walking along. I believe this also stays true for urban planning. So we and the machine have different strengths. Machines are very good at calculating quantitative things, but we are very good at qualitative values, like culture or aesthetics. So we should combine these strengths organically. So we should form up this central team with the machine and so that we can have better decision made for the city. We are at a very important moment in the history where the city becomes the home for more than half of the population. So can we make a better combination? Can we 
utilize the technology and design better to facilitate all this inclusive conversation for the city. I believe if we do so, we can have much more sustainable and uh, livable cities. So I know Shanghai as a city had to grow. I could never go back in time and go back into my childhood. But I feel if we make it right, we can still have Shanghai develop into a city which still keep a sense of humanity, uh, community and humanity. Thank you.